Why we need a holistic approach towards treating fatigue, part two. What truly causes fatigue? Considerations from a holistic perspective. The purpose of this video is to go over the broad range of health issues which cause fatigue are mostly ignored by conventional medicine but can be helped through alternative health care. One of the most common causes of fatigue is hormonal imbalance, but instead of looking at individual hormones in isolation as if they have nothing to do with each other, from a holistic point of view we want to look at the overall balance of different hormones. Typically when investigating fatigue, doctors only test thyroid hormone and they don't diagnose a problem until it becomes very bad. For example, many medical doctors consider a test of thyroid function, TSH, is abnormal only when it gets to 4.0. But many alternative practitioners know that thyroid dysfunction can begin to be seen when TSH starts to go over 2.0. Conventional medicines, labs, drugs, and surgeries are designed for people in severe disease states. Often in the case of fatigue, doctors can find no cause because there is yet a disease state, but the patient feels sick. They may be so tired that their whole life is affected, some can't even hold a job anymore. Yet when the doctors run their tests, everything still comes back quote-unquote normal. And all of this begs the question, what exactly is chronic fatigue syndrome? Is it a mysterious disease, or is it a state of dysfunction or overall poor health? After all, someone can be very unhealthy, yet not present with an official disease. Getting back to the thyroid, doctors perceive thyroid disease as due to the random malfunction of the thyroid gland, or at least that's the way that they treat thyroid disease. However, in natural health, low thyroid function is often related to other issues, such as hormonal imbalance, toxicity, digestion, and nutritional deficiencies. In conventional medicine, treatment for thyroid disease is thyroid hormone replacement. End of discussion. In natural health, we recognize thyroid hormone replacement may be necessary, especially in cases of autoimmune thyroid disease, but we also want to correct other factors that lead to thyroid dysfunction. Often when those other factors are corrected, the thyroid starts working again fine all on its own. But remember, thyroid hormone is only one factor. The body makes many other hormones such as estrogen, testosterone, and adrenal hormones, and when they are and when there are changes in one, typically the others will change because everything in the body is balanced. Perhaps the single biggest factor in chronic fatigue is adrenal dysfunction. In this country, people push themselves too hard, and to compensate, the adrenal glands produce high amounts of the hormone cortisol. Cortisol will, will raise blood pressure, blood sugar, and also lead to abdominal weight gain. But after a while, the adrenal glands get exhausted and are no longer able to produce even normal amounts of cortisol. This is when people become truly exhausted. They may develop low blood pressure or bouts of low blood sugar called hypoglycemia. But when they go to the medical doctor and have all their labs taken, everything often comes back normal. This is a bell chart of how much cortisol people have in a population. The middle blue area is normal. At the extreme right end, a few people have something called Cushing's disease, which creates a state of abnormally high cortisol. On the other side, some other people have severely low states of cortisol from something called Addison's disease. According to conventional medicine, if you don't have these two extremely rare diseases, you are normal and healthy in terms of adrenal gland function. Well, what about people in the red area? Well, if the medical doctors were to test cortisol, which they usually don't, they would come back normal because these people still don't have a severe disease requiring drugs or surgery. Therefore, they might end up being recommended something like antidepressants for their fatigue instead of a natural approach, which would then look to correct the adrenal dysfunction. Adrenal dysfunction almost always happens before thyroid dysfunction, but other hormones will be affected as well. This is a chart of the steroid hormones made by the adrenal glands. Cortisol is the fight or flight hormone and released whenever we are under increased stress. If the adrenals have difficulty meeting high demand, they rob resources from the production of other hormones such as testosterone. Therefore, in natural health, sometimes we look much deeper at hormones than what medical doctors do. For example, there are tests to look at the male hormones and see what they are doing. And then over here, this is a saliva cortisol test. So these tests look at, look at people's real hormonal function. They don't just screen for severe diseases like Addison's or Cushing's disease. 
Estrogen and especially progesterone can also be affected by poor adrenal function. Some people has, have suggested that women under stress experience a worsening of PMS symptoms as their bodies, bodies use resources to produce cortisol and not the sex hormone progesterone. And then in menopause, symptoms are related to the adrenals because after menopause, nearly all progesterone must come from the adrenal glands. Another major consideration is digestion. Many things need to go right in order to absorb the food we eat. People should probably chew their food. Their stomach needs to make adequate amounts of hydrochloric acid and pepsin. The pancreas must produce digestive enzymes such, such as amylase, lipase, and protease. And the gallbladder should release bile to aid in the absorption of fats. Nutritional deficiencies due to poor absorption of nutrients is a huge cause of fatigue. If people can't absorb the nutrients from the foods they're eating, nothing else is really going to matter. Another digestive concern is something called leaky gut or gut permeability. In some people, due to poor digestion of large food particles or microbes that are not supposed to pass through the gut lining and be absorbed, well, they are absorbed. And not only can this lead to fatigue, but allergies and even autoimmune disease. As once large particles get into the body that aren't supposed to get there, the immune system is going to be excessively activated to get rid of them. Bacterial dysbiosis. Parasites and candida are other digestive concerns. Parasites are underdiagnosed. They are not even considered unless there are severe GI symptoms, but they are a huge problem for many people. Food allergies can trigger fatigue. Generally, people are allergic to what they eat the most. Therefore, the most common food allergies in this country are to wheat, corn, soy, dairy, and eggs. Many food allergies are also hidden, where symptoms only happen several days after the allergenic food is eaten, so allergies can become difficult to figure out. Celiac disease is an inability to break down gluten, a protein found in wheat, and celiac disease by itself can cause chronic fatigue. Classically, celiac disease presents with digestive symptoms, but it affects other organs as well, such as the liver and brain, and can even result in dementia. Toxicity is very underappreciated in conventional medicine. Today, our world is overloaded from toxins such as heavy metals, pesticides, genetically modified foods, plastics from, plastics from food containers that mimic estrogen, and even radiation. Toxins may overload the body's major detoxifying organ, the liver, and this leads to multiple chemical sensitivities. Some people seem to be allergic to everything. They need to avoid going to certain places and may or may not have a known history of exposure. Remember, in today's world, toxins are everywhere. We are all exposed. Toxins get into the mitochondria, which are tiny organelles inside each of our cells, which produce ATP, which is the body's stored form of energy. Toxicity or nutritional deficiencies can disrupt this process, and if our cells can't produce energy, then we will have low energy and we will feel chronically fatigued. Even the foods people eat can be a major toxin, especially if someone is eating the standard American diet. Sugar, corn, syrup, and artificial sweeteners are all toxins. And where are people getting their nutritional advice from? Hopefully it is from a better place than the U.S. government. You want to get good nutritional advice so you don't get nutritional deficiencies. The immune system and infect infections, including subacute infections, is another concern. But infections are about more than antibiotics. It's about getting the body well enough to start fly, fighting with invaders on its own. In addition, there are other lifestyle considerations. Are people workaholics? Do they exercise? Use recreational drugs? Are they exposed to hidden environmental allergens? What are their sleep habits? And even family situations can cause fatigue. And finally, a major area that may be overlooked if you're only looking for alternative answers is disease states ignored by medical doctors. Anytime you have lab work done, you should get a copy of the results and look up anything that may be abnormal yourself. So many times, chronically sick people are told that all their labs are normal, when even by conventional standards they are not. It's highlighted and bold in the labs, and the doctors don't even mention it. I don't know why, it's just something I've seen many times, and you have to be aware of this. But more often than not, the key to unraveling mysterious diseases like chronic fatigue syndrome is not to get more complex, but to get more basic. Hormones, digestion, detoxification, nutrition, and other factors like that. And some people have multiple functional problems wrong with them. It's not about the disease and drugs to suppress symptoms. It's about health and returning the body to a state of wellness. 
And if there's a final message to, the, to this video, it's that if your doctor tells you you have something such as chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia syndrome, depression, or any odd illness with no known cause or cure, and their major treatment option is dangerous medications such as antidepressants, you may want to start looking for answers elsewhere. Just because your doctor or conventional medicine in general doesn't know what is causing your fatigue, that doesn't mean no one else knows. Thank you.